Do you want to unlock the secrets to peak productivity and performance in both your personal and professional life? How can you achieve remarkable levels to surpass your goals and expectations? By understanding the dynamics of efficiency and implementing effective strategies, you can elevate your success and reach new heights of achievement. Welcome to Biz Help For You with host Candy Messer. Entrepreneurs like to focus on the big picture, like profitability, success, and a smooth running organization. But there always seems to be those little things like taxes, employee compensation, laws, regulations, and more. Now you can get the answers you need in one place. Join us today as we break it all down for you. Now, here's your host, Candy Messer. Hello and welcome to Biz Help For You with Candy Messer. Thank you for joining me today. If you missed my last episode and would like to listen to the show, links can be found on my social media pages as well as multiple favorite podcast platforms. And if you'd like to receive notifications on when my podcasts have been uploaded, please like and subscribe. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my guest today. Adam was stabbed in the throat while at a movie theater woke up seven days later from a coma, living off tubes, completely weak and broken. He felt like quitting and giving up on his potential, but instead he decided to fight for it. He learned how to optimize his performance and put a clear plan together. Now he runs a business around his passion to empower driven people and entrepreneurs by optimizing their performance. So Adam, welcome to the show. Hey, I'm excited to be on. I am looking forward to this conversation, but before I ask you questions on the topic, I would love for you first to tell just a little bit more about your story about getting stabbed <laughs> in the throat at a movie theater. I mean, that's a traumatic event to overcome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Your listeners are probably thinking, well, what has happened there? So we'll just dig right into it. So basically I graduated college and I actually accepted a sales job in Northern California and two weeks before the job started, went up there looking for housing, super last minute. And long story short, I was trying to kill time. And so I went to a movie by myself cause I didn't really know anyone in the area. And you know, it's like a normal movie, the lights dim and my eyes are glued to the screen. Then all of a sudden, like 10 minutes into the movie, I feel hard hit to my throat. And my initial reaction was like, whoa, this guy hit me hard. And so I stood up and I was like, dude, what the hell? And then I felt another punch to my arm and chest. So then I turn around and I push him. And as I push him, I feel a cut on my wrist and ear. And instantly I realized this guy stabbed me. Those weren't punches. So I started yelling, I've been stabbed, I've been stabbed. The lights turn on and I see the guy start running away. And I'm bleeding out. So this guy stabbed me in the throat with a chef knife. The ones that get bigger, closer to the mm -hmm. handle. Went halfway through my throat, punctured my lung, and went so deep in my arm, almost out the other side. So I'm gushing out blood, like, rapidly. I take off my shirt, wrap around my neck, and I'm just, like, applying pressure to hold the blood in. Then these two older women come running up, and they're like, what should we do? And I tell them, just put pressure on my neck. So they start doing that. And then I hear someone say, should we call 911? <laughs> I lose it. As I'm sitting there bleeding out on the freaking floor of a movie theater, I yell back, yeah, you should call 911. If you don't call them in this situation, when would you? Like, this is literally what they're designed for. So anyways, paramedics come, they start asking me all these questions. Like, what's your name? What year is it? Who's president? And I get it. They're making sure I'm conscious, staying with them. They have their reasons. But this whole time I'm like, can you guys get to know me later? Like, how about you save my life right now? I'm like, what is with all these people right now? Anyway, so they're like, all right, let's get them up on the stretcher. And so they lift me up on the to the stretcher, and I feel all my wounds worse than the initial stabbing because now I don't have the adrenaline in me. Mm -hmm. And they start carrying me down the stairs, which, by the way, there are tons of stairs because I was that close to the top row. And... For every stair there was, it felt like I got stabbed in all those places four times because there's four people on the stretchers, like boom, boom, boom. And so like, I remember holding myself, just looking at the ceiling, trying not to scream my guts out. Like it was the most excruciating pain I've ever endured. So we finally get down to the ambulance and I start thinking like, okay, the paramedics got me. I can start to relax. And as soon as I get that thought, I feel a cold rush through my entire body 
And it dawned on me, I lost a lot of blood. Like I could definitely die here. Now I see them come over with this oxygen mask. And I remember thinking, don't fall asleep. You're not supposed to fall asleep in this situation. They put that mask over my face. I'm knocked out with some hardcore drugs or whatever it was. And I wake up seven days later from an induced coma. And I'm living off tubes, plugged in everywhere in my body. You unplug them, you unplug my life. And when I was in this state, I was as broken as you could possibly get, as weak and broken as you could possibly be. So for starters, like I used to be six foot, 170 pounds, 8% body fat, like pretty jacked. Now I'm 130 pounds. So it's like sticks and bones. And I could just tell my body was like so malnourished. And I could just, because all the nutrients I was getting was just through tubes up my nose. And my body just felt so freaking weak. And even after I got to a point where I could start eating normal food, I literally would have to nap in order to eat a meal. Like imagine you're eating a meal and halfway through you literally fall asleep at the table because eating exerted that much energy. Going up to use the bathroom, it felt like running a marathon. So I was broken physically, but the worst part was what happened to me mentally. I started to have like self-doubt and fear. I started questioning, can I still hit my goals in life or is my potential destined to rot away with my ambitions? As I started contemplating these questions, I remember the nurse was like, okay, Adam, do you want to get up and use the bathroom? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Like, I want to start trying to get better. So I get to the edge of my edge of my bed. My legs don't work. And there was just this rage that was fueled inside of me. I was like, I used to be at a visual and track athlete, and now my legs don't work? Like, are you kidding me? So it was in that moment, I was like, you know what? This happened. I can't change that I got stabbed, me sitting here cursing at the world, blaming others, like that isn't serving me. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get my life back on track. And it was in that moment, I switched from this victim mentality of making excuses, blaming the world to stepping into my power saying, you know what, past is the past. All I can choose is how I'm going to move forward. And so the thing was, I struggled to do all these things that would improve my life, like the physical therapy, speech therapy exercises, and so on. So I started learning how the human brain worked. And I started being able to do the things I know I need to do more consistently, feel more motivated. And day by day, I just kept learning, okay, what kind of workouts and what kind of foods will boost my energy levels, my cognitive function, so that I can become more powerful. And just day by day, week by week, month by month, I started building myself up. And within one year, I ran a 459 mile. I was putting up great weight in the gym again. And I was just in a great place mentally. Fast forward another six years, and now I help entrepreneurs and other really driven people become the man they have the potential to be or become the best possible version of themselves. And yeah, mm -hmm. their businesses obviously correlate to that success as a result. Mm -hmm. Well, and what I'm hearing you saying too is like your mindset made a big difference in terms of your healing as well too. And so it's not oh. just what happens to us physically, mm -hmm. but it's what we're thinking about and like focusing on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, your mental state is ultimately what's going to dictate your level of success. When you have the right mm -hmm. mental attitude, you can get any of the change you want. The physical comes after and so forth. So yeah, 100% is when that mental switch, when I was like, you know, I'm committed to making my life get back on track. I'm committed to becoming stronger for myself in my future. That's when everything started to change. My actions <laughs> changed as a byproduct out of that mental state. Right. So those who are listening to my show generally are small business owners, right? And the entrepreneur mm -hmm. that they want to be successful and they generally wear like so many hats that they have so many responsibilities. Yep. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of everything, right? So mm -hmm. for those who are listening then, maybe what are some of the common factors that they might need help with from your perspective in terms of improving their performance? Yeah. So there's a bunch of different ones. So, I mean, I, I tend to work with uh, the smaller entrepreneur, the solopreneur, small team entrepreneurs. And yeah, a few things is one, first of all, procrastination tends to be like a very reoccurring theme. They know what they need to do for the most part. They struggle to do it. Other times it's getting themselves out of their own way. So for example, you have tons of different responsibilities, but how are you prioritizing it? Are you spending a lot of your time doing tedious tasks like creating graphics for your YouTube, posting on your social media? If so, your business is gonna be stuck because your time and energy is better spent on things that actually produce revenue that require your intelligence. Like you could outsource all that stuff very cheaply. So a lot of it is just delegating all these tedious tasks so that they have more time and energy 
to focus on the things that grow their business. So getting them to operate more of a CEO rather as the solopreneur is a big one. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, another key thing that we focus on is really boosting their energy and their mental alertness. I mean, we all know if you wake up tired and you're exhausted and you're in a bad mental state, you make worse decisions. You're not in that creativity or flow state. The quality of work isn't going to be very good. So it's really like a three-part system that we do is focus on like getting them to take action consistently, feel excited to grow their business day in, day out, focus on the more high impact actions and delegate the rest of the, to get their time back. They're, they're mm -hmm. focusing on the right key activities that grow their business. And then thirdly, optimizing their energy, their mental alertness and so forth. So they're more productive with the time they use to work. Right. Well, I think a lot of that is obviously interrelated because if we are mm -hmm. doing oh, all of these things in her business, <laughs> right, we're going to be tired because we're working so many hours. But yeah, mm -hmm. we often feel like, oh, well, if I delegate something, it's not going to be done the way I would do it. Right. Or as mm -hmm. good as I would do it. Right. So I think that's another mindset area where we have to overcome mm -hmm. that as business right. owners yep. too, to think we can offload it to someone else. We can teach them like they might not even get Training. it right the yeah. very first time. But yeah, you show them over time, yeah. just like we didn't learn the very first time either. Yeah, so exactly. I think that's something. 100%. It's like you weren't good at it the first time, but obviously repetition makes perfect. And you can give them the template and continue training them in the in the long term. It's going to be so much more beneficial. And it's like, even if they only did the work at 70% of the quality that you do it at, that's mm -hmm. such a huge boost. You're freeing up hours of your time and energy to go spend on other things. And it's like, perfectionism is a form of procrastination. If you look at any of the top entrepreneurs, they don't sit there redoing things a hundred different times. That, like 70% is perfect. Mm -hmm. That's so true. I think another thing too, is sometimes people probably feel accomplishment by checking off tasks on a to-do list, right? So even mm -hmm. if it's not in their zone of genius, or maybe it's things they shouldn't be doing, they might feel like when they look in the morning at their to-do list and they have 20 things and then they're checking them off throughout the day, like, oh, I feel successful, right? Because I've done something. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so again, so you really have to think like, are these things really growing your revenue or they're just do you mm -hmm. want do you want business growth or do you want ego pleasing? And so that's one that they're just like you just gotta realize like at a certain point, like you're an entrepreneur, you gotta you gotta be step into your power and be responsible for your business growth. And so yeah, may make you feel good, but who cares about how you if you feel good? What I care mm -hmm. about is providing for my family so that my future, my wife, my future children can have the lifestyle I want to provide them. Not, oh, I felt good about the work I did 20 years ago. It's like, I'm, I'm results driven. And I think most entrepreneurs should be too. But yeah, definitely, like you said, it's like one of those things like, yeah, the mindset work helps them go into this type of work, right? Mm hmm Right. And obviously we start businesses because we want them to be successful and we want the mm -hmm. freedom. We don't want to work all of the hours that often we end up putting in, you know, so yeah. maybe what are those first couple steps maybe that you can share with them on what they can actually do to implement these changes to improve their mm -hmm. performance? Yeah, gotcha. Which, which one do you want to step into? Or do you want to go into like the mindset direction, the, the energy, <laughs> mental alertness? Give me some, give me some sort let's of direction start, here. Alex. Okay, let's start with the energy and alertness. Because again, yeah. like you said, if we wake up tired in the morning, we're not going to have a great day anyway. Yep. So what would they do yep. to improve that? Yeah. And so the number one thing is going to be your sleep. So because the thing is, you can eat super healthy. You can cut out all the alcohol, all the sugar, all the carbs, whatever you define as healthy, right? You could do that perfectly. You could be working out every single day. You could have the best workout plan ever, or things that are going to increase your mitochondria so you have more energy, deliver more oxygen in your brain so you think more clearly. But if you don't get good sleep, none of that stuff matters. And I'm speaking from personal experience. I've been in that cycle of getting poor sleep but taking care of my health in other areas, and it doesn't matter. So what I'm trying to say is sleep is the number one thing you can do. And I say it the way I do because everyone hears it and goes, oh, yeah, I already know sleep's important, but they don't do it. So it's like you don't know the depth of how important it is. Otherwise, you would be prioritizing your sleep, right? And so with that being said, to get the best sleep possible, there's so, so many different things you could do. But I'd say the most impactful actions are, first of all, Go to bed before 10 p.m. This is ideal. Now, the reason why is because 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. are the golden hours for sleep. And so the way I often explain it is like 
look, have you ever gone to bed at 2.30 in the morning and felt good the next day? Even if you got eight hours of sleep, it's like, no, because Mm -hmm. it's not just getting eight hours of sleep. It's the specific hours that you go to sleep. I mean, think about how we evolved as hunters and gatherers. For hundreds of thousands, millions of years, we went to bed when the sun came down. We didn't have like lights that were going to keep us through the night, you know? Burning fire maybe got us to a little bit night later in the night, but at the end of the day, we evolved to go to bed earlier. And as a byproduct, when we actually do this, our circadian rhythm is going to be more dialed in. Our energy is going to be more optimized. So ideally, go to bed earlier, ideally before 10 p.m. Second part to that is consistency. You want to go to bed at the same time every single night or at least within a 30-minute gap. So personally, I go to bed at 9.30 every single night, which means maybe some nights it's like 9.15, 9 o'clock. Other nights, maybe it's 9.45, 10 o'clock, right? And so do that six out of seven times a week, ideally seven out of seven. And what this is going to do is it's going to start dialing in what we call your circadian rhythm, which is really your body's internal clock and deals with your hormone production. Now, again, when I say hormones, everyone goes, oh, I know hormones are important, but they don't know to the depth. So the way I often explain this is like, look at people who take steroids. You know, oftentimes they get roid rage, where the smallest thing, it takes them off like a bomb and they're not in control of their emotions. That's because they have a surplus of testosterone and their hormones aren't optimized. So if your hormones aren't optimized, you aren't optimized. And so this is one of the things. And the cool thing is oftentimes when you start dialing your circadian rhythm, going to bed at the same time every single day, what's going to happen is you're going to start waking up earlier in the day as a natural byproduct and you're going to feel more tired earlier in the night. So, and I say this because a lot of people are going to say, oh, I have insomnia or I, I'm a night owl or I can't fall asleep. It's like the amount of times I heard people say that and then they come through our program, we help them implement this night routine. Well, all of their sleep problems vanish. And the thing is, even if you believe you're insomniac or you're a night owl, how is holding on to that belief serving you? Is it helping you get better sleep so you feel more energized and grow your business? Or is it enabling you to just feed into this mediocrity cycle where you get terrible sleep, your performance suffers, and your business suffers. So even if you are right and you're one of the few people that actually does have insomnia, how is holding on to that belief serving you? It's not. So you might as well operate from a place that's helping you improve your performance in your life so you feel better about what you're accomplishing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you touched on the whole night owl thing too, because when you were talking about going to bed earlier Mm -hmm. and I was thinking I am an early bird for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm up usually like five in the morning, maybe six at the latest and do, you know, try to go to bed by like nine 30 for Mm -hmm. others that I know too. They'll say like, Oh yeah, but I do my best in the evenings. I'm definitely a night owl. I'll stay up till midnight or two. And then I just sleep until 10, you know? And so Mm -hmm. just your saying about like, well, maybe that's just because of what you're in, in terms of routine right mm-hmm. now, right? And if yeah, you exactly. implemented some changes, maybe you'll notice that you don't you have actually to perform be. better earlier mm-hmm. in the day. It's like, how do you know that thing up late's the best way for you to perform if you've never done the opposite, right? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you, there's no way you could possibly fathom how good you'd be performing in the morning because you've never actually done this whole routine that sets you up for success in the morning, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great tip for people to at least try it, you know, try it for a month or something, see what happens, right? Yeah, and that's the other uh, point is like, try it for a month, because a lot of people will try it for a week or two, and then their body's not adjusted to it. And they go, oh, it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Doug, your body, you haven't put yourself into that routine yet. So yeah, good point there. Mm -hmm. So how long do you think, because I just threw out a month, right? You know, but how long do you think it really does take to implement something effectively to know if it's working Mm -hmm. for you or not? I like saying a month, but it really depends from person to person and how serious they are to the night routine and the things we set up. Mm -hmm. Because you could go in there. The main thing is like you really just have to learn how to shut off your mind before sleep. Like that's the number one, I would say one of the biggest things. Have a night routine that shuts off your mind. Because if you learn to do that, you're going to get good sleep sooner than later. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I like to say about about a month. But again, it really just depends on your level of commitment. Like, are you doing like an hour long night routine where it really calms your mind and calms your body so that when you're in bed, it's like boom, nights out? Or are you doing like a half one and you're not going to get as good results? So it's it's almost like hard to answer the the time because the quality of the night routines, I would say more important. But it's like, yeah, right. if you start implementing those, we've had people that get results within days. But again, they're doing things mm-hmm. with good quality and good intention rather than some of the people that take a month where I'm like, yeah, bro, well, you're doing terrible quality. You're doing a terrible execution on your night routine. You're watching TV before you go to bed. Like, 
you know, so it, it's more about the quality, right? The quality leads to the time answer. Right. Well, one thing I've heard before, too, is, you know, putting away your devices like at least an hour oh, yeah. before mm -hmm. you're going to go to bed because of all of the interaction the, and your, you know, your, your brain is stimulated. Right. So what mm -hmm. would you say in terms of experience that you've seen that mm -hmm. is that yeah. like, correct about an so hour or? Yeah, so I, I personally do an hour and there's two parts to why you want to do that is, first of all, yeah, if you're watching a TV show or your mind's stimulated just from like thinking about all this other stuff, again, your mind's going to be very active when you go to bed and you're gonna, it's going to have like crazy dreams. You're going to be tossing and turning versus when you're centered, you're more present and you go to bed, your mind's more calm. Well, then, yeah, you're going to get better sleep. But the second mm -hmm. part is all these electronics, they release chemicals in our brain like dopamine and it's absolutely terrible so think about it this way it's like facebook literally 95 percent of the revenue comes from ads so the longer they hold your attention the more money they make that's an entire business model right mm -hmm. and so they have literally made their app as addicting as possible because if they do that they can make more money and so it's not just them though that's like every every place like all the platforms right so the point is your phones all these electronics have literally been chemically engineered to release these chemicals in your brain that make you addicted, higher mind activity that mess with your circadian rhythm. So personally, I mean, you can even see my phone right now is like black and white. I have it on that all day long because it's like, first of all, my brain doesn't get fried as quickly and I spend less time on there because everything looks disgusting. I go on Instagram, everything's black and white. And I'm out of there. So to mm -hmm. answer your question, personally, I think like 30 minutes to an hour is probably like the sweet spot of just no electronics. And yeah, if you are going to use electronics, make it black and white or add like a blue light reduction thing onto your computer, like flux or something. Mm hmm. Perfect. Well, and earlier you talked about procrastination and perfectionism leads to procrastination as well, too. So maybe can you give some tips on how to overcome that perfectionism that a lot of entrepreneurs do have so that they will stop procrastinating? Yeah. And so the biggest thing with that is you kind of just have to realize more. It's more about like time and energy management. So the way I often think about it is like, well, first of all, I just realized it through my own experience, like Sometimes when I rush through content or whatever, and it's not totally perfect, I'll release it and it'll, it'll blow up. So I think just having those experiences have allowed me to see that like perfectionism isn't worth it. Me spending two times the energy to make that content 20% better or 15% better, it's simply not worth it from a time and energy management standpoint. And I think it's one of those things where experience is like the most powerful teacher because you can start seeing those times like how those times you kind of just don't allow that perfectionism to take action and see how quickly you move through your day, how much more productive you are. So ultimately, I kind of think that's the way to go about it is just like, even if you don't believe what I'm saying, just experience it firsthand, see how much more you accomplish in a day with that. And over time, you're going to start seeing like, it doesn't really change too much. Yeah, there might be a few slip ups or whatever it is, but it's also more authentic too. So like mm -hmm. authenticity is like the name of the game right now. So I know that doesn't right. like directly answer your question, but yeah, kind of, <laughs> that's, how, that's how I see right. it. Well, I, I think what I see in that is, obviously if we're talking about things like social media and people mm -hmm. maybe going, you know, and creating videos or, you know, maybe even putting together like a document or something that's like mm -hmm. a handout or freebie or something, you know, or figuring mm -hmm. out the graphics, like that doesn't have to be perfect and you want to get it done. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I do, that there might be some people saying, but there are certain things that have to be perfect, right? You know, like the mm -hmm. bookkeeping has to be accurate or, you know, mm -hmm. the tax return has to be, or insurance, you know, like mm -hmm. those kind of things too. So I think they need to take it that with a little bit task. of, exactly, mm -hmm. like figuring that out, but not yeah. being perfectionistic in everything that you do and yeah, realizing that idea. most people probably don't even notice, especially if it's a social media thing, right? Mm -hmm. Most people probably don't notice what you notice, right? Because we yeah. just know maybe what we wanted to say and we said that word wrong, but they're just going to be listening and maybe mm -hmm. not even paying 100% attention. They might be just like listening while they're doing other things or mm -hmm. scrolling or whatever, right? So yeah, yeah, I think that's important for us to understand yeah. as entrepreneurs, we might think it's going to affect our reputation if we don't have it perfect, but that's most likely not the case. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, definitely a grain of salt depends on the task. You use some good examples <laughs> there. It's like obviously if you're creating like a, a webinar or something, spend more time and energy making sure it's perfect versus you know posting on your daily piece of content or whatever it may be. So yeah, hundred mm -hmm. percent. Right. 
So is there anything else maybe that you wanted to share on this topic that I didn't think to ask a question about? Yeah, um, I would say like one of the things is to help people overcome this procrastination. Well, first of all, I kind of want to talk about like why people tend to procrastinate, why they consciously know what they need to do, but fail to consistently do it is because 95% of their actions are derived from their subconscious mind. But most people use their conscious mind to declare they're going to change their actions and behaviors. You know, New Year's resolutions are a perfect example. You know, 95% of people fail to maintain them within three weeks. Again, they're using their conscious mind. Oh, I'm going to work out. I'm going to eat healthy. I'm going to be more productive in my business. We all know what happens. They all fall back into their self-sabotaging procrastinating patterns again. Again, 95% of your actions happen subconsciously. This is why most people, they, they've likely had times where there's, they zone out while driving only to mm -hmm. magically appear at their destination with no conscious recall of how they got there. Mm -hmm. Their subconscious mind took over. And so the way to kill procrastination is by linking your subconscious to your conscious mind. So that when you tell yourself tomorrow, I'm going to get up and build this business, or I'm going to create content consistently, you actually do it and you feel excited to do it. Now, your subconscious mind operates all through habits. So another way of phrasing this is, or what we tell our students is, Focus on forming the habit of keeping your promise to yourself. That is going to be one of the most powerful things you can do for your life. So the way, it's like, think about it this way. It's like, what would your body look like right now if you kept your word to work out from two years ago? How much more further along would your business be if you kept your word to hammer out your to-do list every single day for the past six months? Like, you only tell yourself you're going to do things that are going to improve your life, but your ability to actually keep those promises and uphold your commitments is going to profoundly transform your life. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, like, okay, how can I form the habit of keeping my word to myself if I'm in the habit of breaking my promises to myself? Like, it's a catch-22, right? So to do this, we always say start with these smaller changes. So because the thing is, right now, your word might not have value to yourself. You don't, If you tell yourself you're going to do something, you don't know if it's going to get done because you lost that value. You don't have that belief in your word. It, and so to combat this, instead of saying you're going to read for 30 minutes a day or whatever it is, or you want to say, like, I'll read for two minutes a day. And you start with these small little promises to yourself. And after weeks of upholding these small minor promises to yourself, well, guess what? Your word starts to have value. And now when you give yourself more of these bigger tasks, like, oh, now I'm going to work out every single day, you're going to be more likely to actually uphold them because you're in the habit of keeping your promises to yourself. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, so instead of starting out saying, I'm going to exercise five days a week, I'm going to mm -hmm. exercise one day a week for 15 minutes or something. And yep. then build yeah, up exactly. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, well, I would love for you to share if you have any offers for our listeners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, if you want to level up your performance, help you kill procrastination so you grow your business and really just every area of your life. What you can do is two ways to reach out to me. You can either go to superhumanceo.com and check out our training, book a call to speak with me and my team. Or you can find me on Instagram at Adam Lucero, L-U-C-E-R-O, one. So Adam Lucero, one. Perfect. Well, thank you, Adam, for being a guest on my show and talking about this topic. I know it was interesting. Definitely started out with a story, you know, that is <laughs> very impactful. And I'm sure will catch the attention of those who are listening and how you applied it. I think that's the main thing, too, is not that you experienced mm -hmm. it, but you turned it into something that's helping mm -hmm. others. So I really appreciate your discussion with me today. Yeah, well, I, I'm grateful to be on here and be able to speak to your audience and help other people. Perfect. Well, thanks so much. Thank you listeners for tuning in today. I hope you found this topic interesting and enjoyed the informative discussion. Would you please share my show with those you know and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform? I'd really appreciate your support. If you have any additional questions or comments, be sure to reach out to my guest at any of the links that they shared, or you could send me a message at media at abandp.com. I hope you can join me for my next interview. And remember, you can connect with me on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And my website is abandp.com. This episode is sponsored by Affordable Bookkeeping and Payroll Services. If you are overwhelmed trying to handle the financial aspects of your business, ABMP is here to help. Contact us today to discuss your needs at 310-534-5577 or contact at abandp.com. My team and I are eager to assist you. Until next time, have a great day. 
Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next time. Have a terrific day.